Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comps, and this is going to be the first video in a series of short videos I'm going to do on uh, uh, easy leather projects to do for yourself. First thing we're going to make is a pouch type sheath for this knife right here. Uh, this knife was made by my friend and fellow YouTuber, Do Right Fabrication, or Jim over there, and Jim made this out of an older file, and uh, this was his first stock reduction type knife project, and I encourage you to go over there and check out the video. You can look at the uh, description box below for the link to his channel, and he's got a lot of really cool stuff on his channel for the uh, fabricator, the do-it-yourselfer, the homesteader, etc. And uh, he made this thing out of a rather large file, and it came out really good. He just did a little twine wrap down here at the base of it for the handle, and uh, it's it's pretty heavy. I mean, it's not it's kind of nose heavy but I mean you would anticipate that in something like this. Okay start with a sheet of paper and fold it in half evenly. Okay once you've done that go ahead and open it up like a book. Determine the depth you want the knife to reside in the sheath or to rest in the sheath. Place the center of the blade you can look at your grind angle here and then just merely drop to the side. And then what you do is just basically hand outline it and you want to do it, I do it thumb thickness because it's always easier to work with more than with less. Just like that. Now take and cut out half of your pattern with a pair of scissors. Once you've cut out half your pattern, fold it over along your center line trace it out and cut your other side out. Okay, now you're going to have your first generation pattern here. You can see that once we fold it over we've got plenty of room for a welt. Okay, lay your pattern out on your leather. Lay it up, rough side up. And you want to make sure that you leave enough on this end here, if you're right-handed, for your belt loop. If you're a left-hander, you want to put your belt loop on this side. Okay, hand draw your pattern or transfer it to your leather. Go ahead and just hand draw curves on here and go ahead and do this. This is going to be your belt loop here. Now what I'll generally do is is I'll go ahead and I'll set it up to be approximately an inch wide. Now what you can do is, is you can see this right here is about seven eighths and that'll become important here when I show you how you, if you want to put a dangler attachment on it. But go ahead after you hand draw it. Just add your belt loop. You can see now that we have our pattern laid out and drawn onto the leather. Uh, I usually go five inches. So have your have your line between this point and this point here. Or between your center point and the outside of your sheath. And then just go ahead and have five inches out and that's usually sufficient. Okay, now we're ready to cut our pattern out. I'm just going to go ahead and use a regular utility knife to do that. Okay, now you're cut out and you can go ahead and mark your center on it right there. So when you go to fold it over be just like that. Now the tail is where this is going to fold, up, fold over and form your belt loop here. What you can do is, is you can actually take this right here and round this off by hand if you wanted to. Or what I do is I just use a belt tool and it comes out with a nice point. Now, this isn't necessary, but it makes a nicer piece of work if you use an edging tool and go ahead and go around your edges. And around the, around the sides where we're actually going to have it affixed together, where we're actually going to put the welt in, it's not important to have it on the, on the rough side of the leather, but on the flesh side it is. So what we'll do is, is we'll go ahead and start out here and just work our way around here. Just like this. Now what I'm going to do in this instance is, 
is we can see where the knife's laid out in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drop an inch and I'm basically going to run an angle from here to here and cut that off. Now at this point here we've got our initial edging and our initial shape of the outside of the sheath done as you can see. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is, is now's the time to, if you're going to do any kind of decorating or tooling of the leather, this is the time you would do it. And what you want to do is you want to just wet the leather like that before you do a stamp. And I just use water and rubbing alcohol. At this, at this point here is where you'd want to go ahead and make your, put your maker's mark in it. Okay, lay your, lay your knife up inside your sheath that you've got folded over evenly open it up and go ahead and draw inside your sheath here where your blades resting at and this is going to be where your border for your welt use your same pattern that you had cut out before to draw your welt lay it out and then you can look at your thickness here of how thick your welt's going to be okay at this point cut out your welt okay after you get your welt cut out just go ahead and lay it up in there you drew in there. Go ahead and fold it over. Mark it off where this ends so you can cut that off. And then at the very end you're going to want to cut some off down here too to facilitate a drain hole. Now you can use just about any kind of contact adhesive and it'll work for you. I usually use barge, uh, wood weld, works well which you can get at any hardware store and I just use a small disposable brush as an applicator. While your adhesive is tacking up here go ahead and take your width with your divider or something similar and just go ahead and scribe the inside of the sheath here. Okay while our also while we're tacking up here with our adhesive what we're going to go ahead and do is determine our attachment points. For our belt loop. So we'll go ahead and make our first stitch holes in the loop here itself. And generally on like a five inch, you can see it's five inches right here. What we're going to go ahead and do is just go about two inches up right here. So we go ahead and mark that. And we'll lay out our holes. Now what I do is, is I use a just a standard lacing punch for this right here. And if you don't have one of these, you choose not to do it. What you need to do is just set up your holes and evenly space them. And use a small awl. Okay, by that time, your contact adhesive will tacked up enough to go ahead and attach it. So lining up on those lines you scribed inside the sheath, you go ahead and lay your welt in. Okay, fold your belt loop over and using an awl or something else, just go ahead and scratch the outside of where your belt loop is going to go. and that lets you know where you're going to put your adhesive. Okay, while that's tacking up, what I do is is I take my divider and go about 5 eighths of the width of the welt, just a little over half inch or halfway of the welt, and this is where I'm going to do my stitch line. Now I actually have a stitch groover, so 
using a divider would be the way you'd do it if you didn't have one of these, which would work fine. But the stitch groover makes a nice even channel for your stitching. By the time you get your stitch grooves done, your belt loop will have tacked up enough. Go ahead and place your belt loop down. Now if you desire to have a dangler for your sheath, before you attach this you would go ahead and slide this up underneath there and then attach that and then that would be your dangler point. And if you desire not to use a dangler with this you would just go ahead and write it down and upside down just like that. Now that we got that on there what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to use a, a single punch and I'm going to go ahead and perforate the sheath itself through the belt loop so that, are, that all of my stitch holes are all lined up. Now I'm just going to go ahead and line up my stitch holes for the outside. Again, if you don't have a punch like this, or a one that's a diamond punch, I use a slant punch. What you could do is, is take your awl and lay out your holes individually. Okay, you can see now we've got our stitch holes lined up on the outside. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do this as a saddle stitch and it's a lot easier if I just stand here in front of you. So what you're going to do is to start out with your hole and you're going to have two needles right here hook the opposite ends of, the, of your thread. Go ahead and insert it through your starting hole. Like that. And run it down to where it's even. Now take this end here from the outside, run it back through like that. Now take your next one and run it right alongside that right there and through just like that. Pull it through and then pull it tight and that locks the stitch in. You go ahead and start here. Again, pull it through. Then from the inside, run it back through. Just like that. And pull it tight. Okay, now when you get to your end here, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and back stitch a few, and then just go ahead and we'll cut it off and heat it up and be done with that stitch. Now when I get to the end here, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can take and you can actually tie an overhand knot in it and then heat it up if you chose to. Or what you can do is, is just cut it off flush and then just go ahead and heat the ends of it. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and test fit our knife here. You can see it's right up against our welt inside. And it would close up, but it's going to be really doggone tight up there towards the handle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a second short welt in here just for the handle section. I'll probably do it about, uh, I don't know, about two and a half, three inches long. Okay, adding that in there is really going to make a huge amount of difference there when it comes down to when we stitch this thing down. So... What we'll do is, is we'll go ahead and we'll just kind of taper this down. Kind of like that there. Just take a razor knife or you can take your belt sander or whatever have you. And uh, cut that at an angle so it'll fit in there good. And we'll go ahead and glue that in place right now. Okay, we've added our second little welt in there. 
and uh, trimmed it up. So that'll give us a little more, a little more space for that handle. And if he changes wrap material too, that would probably accommodate that. Now you can leave this unfinished if you desire to. Uh, what I'll do generally at this point is, is I'm going to go ahead and finish the inside of it with a uh, just a oil dye. What I typically do is I just spritz a little bit of water on the inside of it. And take my dauber and we'll just finish the inside of it here. Okay, after our dye is dried here and they've buffed out the inside a little bit, I'll go ahead and just put a top coat on it, which I just use the uh, RTC from B Natural Leather Care, which is really good. And all I do is pour a little in the cup. And apply it with a cotton ball. Okay, after we've got our inside of our sheath finished here, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just apply our adhesive to both sides and close it up. Okay, once our adhesive set up now, Go ahead and bring it down, make it even, and we just kind of Just like that. Now what we'll do is we'll take our small individual punch and we'll go ahead and punch all the way through for our stitch holes. Just like that. Okay, now we got our holes punched. Now it's time to stitch it up. Same thing as before, start out with your two needles here, except what I'm going to do here at the bottom is, is I'm going to go ahead and come back on itself here and double stitch that first stitch where I start at. And then I'll just go ahead like I was with the rest of the stitching. Just run it back through again. And you can do this by hand. You don't need to have a stitching pony like this right here. Although a stitching pony definitely makes it easier to manipulate your thread. Okay, once we get to the end, what we do is we just reverse course and come back down. I'm probably going to come back about at least six or seven stitches and back stitch and then finish the stitch. Well, now she's all stitched up. And now what we got to do is, is test fit it. The moment of truth. Perfect. Now what 
I do is I take some 400 grit sandpaper and go over all the edges. Smooth it out as much as I can. Now since we've already got it cleaned up, the sheath, what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and just wet form it in the Kydex press here. So what I'll do is I'll just wet it down again. Take a rag and dry it off a bit. Stick it in here. Do the part of our press on top. Clamp it down. Just like that. Okay. Let's take our wood forming out. And it's pretty custom right there. Time to go ahead and dye it. And we'll leave it to hang overnight and dry up, and uh, it'll be considerably lighter in the morning. Okay, well now our sheath is dried, or the dye has, and I've already buffed it out. Um, you always want to make sure you buff it until you don't get any more dye to transfer on whatever you're buffing it with, or to be very minimal. And uh, what we're going to do now is, is uh, put a sealant on top of it. And you can see I haven't burnished this at all. That's just from using that uh, sandpaper. So you can see how smooth that came out just by using sandpaper alone. And what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and put our top coat on. Okay, after our top coat's dried, what we're going to do is just go to buff. And you can see that edge came out really good with just that sandpaper. I didn't even... I mean, really, I'm going to burnish it anyway, but there's really not that much need. And the fit. is really good. You can see it doesn't take much effort to withdraw it. But yet retention is pretty good. Okay, now we're just going to go ahead and burnish up the edges on it. And what I use for that is uh, gum tragic amp. I just take a little bit, just shaking it up, and I just put it on my finger and I just rub it on these edges here. Touching tool, which is just a hardwood, it's like a hardwood bob that goes on the end of it. I'm using the Dremel tool here. Then I usually follow it up with a piece of denim. And you can see how the edges now are burnished right there. And our sheath is done. We've got our edges done. And ready to go home. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.